So uh, Martin Sanderon, he's a senior geologist, a uh, special consultant, and he has been with GEA since 1985 and has worked in most sedimentary basins in Greenland. During 2008 to 2016, he served as a lead geologist in, in Dong ENP, working with regional clay-based exploration in Greenland and North Sea. So then, uh, yeah, welcome, and uh, I'll give you the ability to share screen and go ahead. Thanks a lot. I will just, it's here. Yeah, and <clears throat> first of all, first of all, I will, uh, I will start, start to thank you for giving us the opportunity to present the whole of Greenland resource assessment, which is probably one of the largest frontier regions of the world. We, and we have worked with this since 2019 and are currently close to finalize. With this presentation, I will take you through the process on how we carried out this extensive hydrocarbon resource assessment covering the entire Greenland shelf and onshore areas. Uh, let's see how I need that. Well, uh, it's a fair statement to say that resource assessments of frontier exploration regions provide challenges due to the general sparsity of data. And although this also applies to Greenland, it has nevertheless been possible to carry out a full-fledged resource evaluation covering all of Greenland. We will present the methodology used, in <clears throat> which incorporates all available industry, geos, Nuna oil and government data, including data from the world-class Greenland onshore analogs. We have compiled the data in a consistent GIS-based play assessment with the aim of providing risk-based recoverable yet to find volumes for all of Greenland. And these have been QC'd by the NPD and uh, the GIS PAX company. Originally, the project was initiated mainly to guide government authorities in planning for future licensing rounds and guide industry towards the most prospective areas in Greenland. However, during summer 2021, <clears throat> the Greenland authorities decided to close down all future hydrocarbon exploration activities, but it was also decided to finalize the project <clears throat> for posterity to get an overall overview as long as the expertise is still available. So the first step in the resource evaluation workflow is to compile all available data on the stratigraphic and structural framework the petroleum systems and the basin statistics, integrate regional seismic interpretation, and finally perform basin modeling. In West Greenland, the seismic 2D database amounts to approximately 250,000 kilometers with a 3D data <clears throat> coverage of 13,000 square kilometers. These have been interpreted to provide a consistent seismic stratigraphic framework, taking into account the world-class data analog outcrop data from the Nusuak Basin in West Greenland over here, and all the available well data from the 15 exploration wells and the nine <coughs> uh, offshore stratigraphic boreholes in the Northern Baffin Bay. The outcrop data from the Nusuak Basin provide important information on the sedimentary response to the various tectonostratigraphic phases, distinguished by significant unconformities. You see some here, and there's one here and there. And these can be followed into the offshore areas and recognized both in well data and in seismic data. So, Based on this extensive data compilation, seven plays from the Ordovician to the Miocene have been recognized in West Greenland. And of these, the Cretaceous to Middle Eocene plays have been assessed. In Northeast and East Greenland, the seismic database is considerably smaller than in West Greenland, amounting to approximately 115,000 kilometers of 2D data, most of which were acquired in relation to the re <clears throat> recent 
offshore exploration activities. No exploration wells are available, but also here the world-class analog outcrop data ranging from the Devonian to the Paleogene, as well <clears throat> as data from the Norwegian Shelf and the Barents Sea provide important information for the interpretation of a consistent str seismic stratigraphic framework. Due to the lack of exploration wells in Northeast Greenland, the framework for interpreting the offshore data mainly comes from detailed knowledge on the onshore sedimentary succession. <clears throat> Here with examples of outcrops from the Permian, the Jurassic showing the correlations uh, to the analogs in Norway and the Cretaceous. Based on the extensive data compilation, 12 plays from the Devonian to the Neogene <clears throat> have been recognized in East and North Greenland. And of these, the Devonian to Paleocene plays <clears throat> have been assessed. As mentioned before, a large part of the seismic data have been revisited and interpreted to provide a super regional seismic stratigraphic framework with ties to all available well data for both West and North East Greenland. Here we see two rather spectacular examples from Baffin Bay in Northwest Greenland and across the Denmark Sound Ridge in Northeast Greenland. The seismic stratigraphy has then been correlated with the recognized place and these data then provide the necessary input for the data basin modeling. Just like the seismic data, all the available wells and stratigraphic boreholes have been revisited and reinterpreted and assigned to the various play levels. And to evaluate the outcome of the wells, all wells have been added to the player post-drill evaluation tool for quick play-based overview and dry well analysis. The last step in data compilation was to carry out a regional basin mod modeling study. The main input was provided by the super regional seismic interpretations and data from the various known source rocks in West and East Greenland. Here with an example of the maturity maps of the Sanomanian Turonian source rock interval. In West Greenland, six different source rock intervals ranging from the Ordovician to the Miocene are present and incorporated in the modeling. And in East Greenland, three source rock intervals, <coughs> the Triassic, the Jurassic to earliest Cretaceous, and a possible Cenomanian Turonian source rock have been used. Finalizing the data compilation by storing data in the player GIS database, it is time to go <clears throat> to the next step in resource evaluation workflow and start the play analysis to produce all the relevant composite common risk segment maps for all the assessment units. First, we developed a standardized risking scheme using a split risk approach in order to ensure consistent risk evaluation throughout the entire process. Risks are <clears throat> evaluated taking into account that Greenland is a frontier exploration region with lower confidence levels than in mature exploration areas and therefore having more restricted POS ranges. Although the general high quality data from the onshore regions may provide good constraints, especially for the reservoir presence inputs. For reservoir effectiveness, the used proxy is burial depth corrected for possible uplift and the possibility for local intrusions. For top seal effectiveness, the used proxy is overburden thickness modified for large amounts of uplift if applicable. And in order to assess trap risk for use in a yet to find context, the applied proxy is based on the possibility to acquire high quality data offshore or onshore now and in the future, not taking present day ice cover into account. However, 
areas covered by thick successions of volcanic rocks are deemed as high risk since all efforts up to now in Greenland have not succeeded in sub-basalt imaging. Finally, the source presence maps are derived from analog data, interpreted paleogeography, and from basin <coughs> and thickness maps, whereas the source maturity maps are derived from the basin modeling studies. These maps provide input to the construction of the charge risking maps. The total risk maps are generated by multiplication of the reservoir presence, reservoir effectiveness, top seal, tra trap present, and charge maps. Phase risk and timing issues have not been assessed in West and Northeast Greenland. Yes. The assessment of charge risk is a bit complicated, since especially in West Greenland, we have to deal with several levels of good source rocks that may contribute to common charge. We have therefore developed a, comma <clears throat> a composite charge workflow that I will run you through in the next couple of slides. Although it appears rather complicated, it is made relatively easy due to the various stacking options in the player tool. First, we start defining possible kitchen areas <clears throat> for the individual source rocks by producing a weakest link, that is a minimum risk value stack of source presence and source maturity, which provides us with kitchen areas. As you see, also for source presence and source maturity, standard risking schemes have been developed. And also note that regional drainage basins overlay for each play derived from the seismic uh, <clears throat> mapping have been constructed. Next step is to generate lateral migration halos around the kitchen areas. Standardized halos of 30, 60 and more than 90 kilometers were applied and down dip migration areas uh, have been defined based on the drainage basins overlay. These areas are risked according to a standard risking scheme shown for proven kitchens, that is where migrated hydrocarbons are known to be present, play risk is of course 100. For unproven kitchens in the same play as the reservoir, the proven play is subtracted 10% person points above the kitchen, that is we start with 90 and risks increase with lateral distance here, 70 for less than 30 kilometers of lateral migration, 40 for 30 to 6 kilometers of lateral migration, and so on. Conditional risks also apply. However, if charge comes from a deeper seated source rock, additional risk of vertical charge must also be applied. We have arbitrarily chosen to subtract 10 person points in play risk for each play level, the source is below the actual play assessed. That means 10 additional person points are subtracted in play risk in all migration zones um, <clears throat> if sourcing comes from one level below, resulting in a play risk of 80 just below above the kitchen and 10% uh, lower in all the migration zones. If sourcing lateral migration zones, um, if sourcing comes from two levels below, 20 person points are subtracted and uh, so on. These inputs produce the play and source specific uh, charge migration map. However, the charge migration map <clears throat> has to be modified by a map showing the actual chance of a mature source rock being present within the drainage basin. And this is the lateral source rock source maturity correction map. This is provided by a minimum risk value stack of maps showing the maximum risk value in each of the drainage basins uh, polygons uh, of source, um, of source um, presence and source maturity and the max and the minimum risk stack uh, uh, is then the the lateral correction map this is used uh, 
to produce the composite charge map uh, for the play by multiplying the charge migration map and the lateral correction map. And this produces then the composite charge map for the play from sourced from a given source rock. However, several composite charge map may be generated depending on how many source rock intervals that could actually source into the play. Finally, the total charge risk is obtained by producing a maximum risk value stack of all these uh, uh, composite risk stacks. Um, and these show areas where the source rock level, which source rock level contributes to charge in a given area with the lowest risk. It should be noted that this simple stacking provides a slightly conservative number compared to using a more correct stochastic approach. However, at present, the latter is rather difficult to apply and we have only tested it <clears throat> in assessment unit one. So let's look at some examples of CRS maps that go into our correlations. Here we see the reservoir presence risk map <clears throat> of the Cretaceous place in the Baffin Bay region in Northwest Greenland. The risk map takes into account the mapped uh, thickness of the play interval and the expected depositional environments based on the knowledge from the outshore, onshore outcrops and the seismic interpretations. For reservoir effectiveness, we use the standard scheme for burial depth with uplift correction if applicable taking into account special area, uh, areas with high risks of intrusions in the play. For top seal risk, the applied standard scheme relies on overburden thickness, also corrected for uplift if applicable, and uh, provides this result. Trap presence should rely on the possibility to acquire high quality seismic data but this concept was first introduced in the later assessment unit, and therefore the risk scheme in Baffin Bay was based on the actual quality and density of the seismic data, and therefore looks like this. The total charge map for the play incorporates both an Albion source rock from play six and a prolific Cenomanian Turonian source rock from play four five, and looks like this. Stacking of all these <clears throat> maps in a multiplication stack eventually play, <clears throat> provides the total risk map for the play. That looks like this for play three, like this for the Cretaceous play four five, and finally this for the mid Cretaceous play six. Eventually producing a max value risk stack showing the areas having the highest POS values for total risk. You will also notice the outlines of the leads assigned to the various <coughs> plays on this map. So now the time has come to the lead evaluation, which is the last step before the yet to find ass assessment. Here, all industry and in-house data have been QC'd and all leads are assigned to a specific play level. At this stage, lead volume calculations and lead risking is also performed. In the Baffin Bay region in Northwest Greenland, 79 leads, uh, that is three and four way closures have been mapped on modern seismic data and assigned to play level. In central West Greenland, the map lead density is strongly influenced by the thick volcanic cover of the Green West Greenland Basalt province, and only in the southernmost part and onshore Nusuak Cretaceous leads could be mapped. In southern West Greenland's 155 closures have been mapped, and the density clearly reflects where exploration activities have been focused during the past years. And finally, the 300 recognized leads in Northeast Greenland are assigned to play levels 
ranging from the Devonian uh, to the Paleogene. Exploration has been focused to the southern part of the region due to ice cover further north, and mapping in the northern part is therefore based on a more open and much more irregular seismic grid. The volumes of the individual leads were calculated using the most recent data and documented mapping carried out by the industry, Geos and Nuna Oil. Stochastic volume calculations are carried out based on industry input or from in-house assessments, mainly using outcrop analog or well data, and include play thickness, net to gross, and porosity. For other values, industry standards have been used. Volume calculation for individual leads are based on the 50% top to base fill distribution, since source rock quality analysis in general do not support fill-to-spill scenarios. For identified structures without area depth pairs, area yield values have been applied, and these can be assessed using the player tool. Based on the risk maps, all leads are risked individually on reservoir presence, reservoir effectiveness, top seal, trap, and charge, providing stochastic values of <clears throat> estimated ultimative recoverables and also mean risk volumes for each uh, lead. And now, finally, we have reached the yet to find assessment in our resource evaluation workflow. Let's take a, two examples, one from Baffin Bay in Northwest Greenland and another one from offshore Northeast Greenland. The yet to find calculation uses a feature density approach where a known feature density per play in a suitable analog area is used to calculate the future target feature density uh, uh, yes, in the target area. And that is simply the analog feature density minus the already identified feature density in the target area. In this examples, there are 24 features already recognized in the Cretaceous Basin target area over here, which gives an identified target area feature density of 0 0.42. We have chosen to assess the analog feature density by looking at the most extensively explored areas in the, re in the region. That is where the seismic data density is highest and for the Cretaceous place, it is up here in the Hamut license. And for the Paleogene place, it is in the areas covered by 3D seismics. Uh, we'd just like to remind you, um, two minutes uh, left, and then we need some. Uh, OK, I, I may just fix That's it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, in this case, well, and that gives a, uh, an observed uh, feature density of 1.58. and the Target feature density is therefore 1.16. So adding volumes to the leads, uh, we use the uh, yeah we, we use the the, the the pool size distribution tool and got volumes uh, mean volumes for the leads which are added the, to the calculations and uh, the mean. The unidentified prospectivity is therefore calculated by multiplying the block size, the future feature density, the mean volume, and the total play risk within each of the blocks, and this, in this case, amounting to 6,800 million barrels of mean risk recoverables. The total yet to find also includes the volumes of the identified prospects, which amounts to 2,300 million barrels mean risked totaling 9.1 billion barrels in the Baffin Bay area. Finally, the total roll-up roll provides a clear picture on where future exploration activities could be directed, given the present day knowledge. I then have to skip the Northeast Greenland uh, part, which is comparable. It's the same methodology. And go to the conclusion. The yet to find volumes in northeast. 
uh, I just went one too far. No. By now, the absolutely most prospective areas of Greenland have been assessed. To sum it up, the numbers for West Greenland are like this. 5.1 billion barrels of mean risk recoverable oil in assessment unit one, 3.7 billion barrels in assessment unit three, 9.1 billion barrels in assessment unit two, and the USGS assessment for West Greenland had a total of 6.1 billion barrels risk recoverable, and the significant upgrade in our assessment can be attributed to acquisition of new data and increased knowledge database. In Northeast Greenland, our assessment provides a mean of 6.1 billion barrels recoverable oil, far from the USGS assessment of around 31 billion barrels. The major downgrade was also here due to acquisition of new data, resulting in a significant revision of the super regional seismic stratigraphic interpretation which will be covered in a separate talk tomorrow. So, finally, all the data are available on the Greenland Resource Assessment Data Portal, which you may find all information on the assessment process, download detailed presentation material documented, documenting all the different aspects of the assessment process, and finally, download the entire ArcGIS project with all resource assessment information including extensive document libraries and updated CPIs of all Greenland exploration wells. So with this, I will say thank you for listening on behalf of me and all my colleagues from Noon Oil, MRA and Geus, who have contributed to this project. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Brian, for this uh, presentation. It was uh, you know, impressive work, Pete, <laughs> all of this work in uh, Greenland. Um, I can see we have uh, not many questions in chat, but um, I guess there's so much data here. Uh, <laughs> I reckon it's kind of the, I guess the biggest challenge has been to like, I guess, integrate it all. Yeah, that is, uh, it, it, it really has been a, a huge effort to to collect the data and then integrate them. Uh, and and <laughs> uh, uh, well, you can see the final map just showing uh, the final total risk and the and the volumes uh, does not really make uh, uh, show the huge amount of of work that it really goes into into producing uh, the final data sets for the yet yeah. to find. Yeah. Um, we have one question here. Uh, were you able to high grade stratigraphically the positional system that can be recognized in mid Norway as having been sourced from Greenland? Uh, I, I, I think my colleague Michael Prul, uh, he will he will comment on that tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right then. Uh, thanks again. Uh, now we will go on to uh, risking of the 2022 key wells by yeah. uh, Matthias. So now, uh, if you all bring up your phones, it will kind of be on the phones, uh, and it also will be relevant for the next presentation given by uh, Alexei Milko. Then you can go ahead, Matthias. Yes, thank you very much, and, and thank you to all presenters so far for great presentations and, and very, very interesting. Um, so uh, we now ask you to do a little bit exercise with us, and the exercise where we as uh, explorationists uh, try to risk the, um, some of the key wells for the 2022 on the on the NCS, but also one of the wells is actually a, a cross-border uh, prospect, so it's uh, actually one well which will be drilled on the UK side. So that's very interesting. So uh, if you can please go to the um, www.menti.com on your phone and you can watch the, my screen here in, in Teams. So uh, so please go to this website and when you get into this website, you can enter the code that you see here in the very top. Uh, that will be, you will see the code uh, when I'm changing the slide as well, but when you go into the website, you will see this picture here and you will enter the code and submit. So I see it's three people already done that. So that's great. So it seems that is working. And um, so I will give you a couple of um, just um, two minutes or something to be to reach a significant number of people to, to attend here. It's um, I can also say that um, Expro News uh, have already contacted us saying that they they want to um, 
write about these wells uh, and the results and compare it to what we have uh, risked them to. So uh, that will be very interesting to see uh, how the community uh, risk the wells. And uh, of course, as you you know, it's um, this uh, will probably be also um, quite a quality check of how I present the wells. And there are of course not much uh, published information on the wells. So it um, some of the wells have more information and some just have two slides. So we just have to use your uh, your um, experience and knowledge, and uh, or just guess for what you think will be the be the risk. So as you know that we have 35 people. So um, I will I think I will give two minutes more. Um, if that's okay. So maybe we can get up to 50 people. It's uh, 170 people in the in the teams. So uh, we should uh, have uh, at least 50 people joining. See that more and more people is coming in. That's great. So as I said, that people have different uh, definition for for uh, risking parameters, but uh, just use your um, your um, your um, personal uh, thoughts about uh, the risks. Don't uh, deal too much with uh, definitions, etc. It's just a fun exercise to get people. Uh, involved in the risking and to see how spread we are on the risking. So that's also interesting to see that uh, people are looking at prospect quite differently. Okay, 60 people and we can give, I think we can give two minutes more or one minute. So uh, if you are struggling, you just go into the menti.com and use uh, this code here. We can uh, see how uh, an example of how it looks like when you are logging in and, and remember to submit. Still people are coming into the Mente, so that's great. Maybe we can reach 100, that would be great. 80 people. Nice to see some people are sending some uh, emojis, some uh, hearts, so uh, hopefully it will not break down as it did in the Norwegian um, your vision a couple of years ago. Okay, 99, 102. That's good. One minute more. So if you're struggling, menti.com and enter the code. As I said, this is the key wells or some of the key wells for 2022. So there are some of them are currently being drilled. So um, it's uh, interesting to see. So we know the results quite quite soon. Okay, 105. Okay, it seems that the number has stopped now, so I think I will move on. Um, so when you uh, look into the Mente, you will see um, I will show different slides, but in, basically you will you will on your phone you will get uh the thing you see to the right here so you will see um a, a reservoir trap source seal retention and you will risk them by zero percent or 10 but that's 100 percent so it was uh, we can't write 100 in mente but so you understand that this is you think it's 30 percent or you think it's 70 percent 70 percent or 40 percent for the reservoir and you remember that you, when you see it on your phone, you need to scroll down on the side if you don't see this one. So, so please scroll down, and um, and then I will show the results afterwards. So I hope that everything is working fine, and we can uh, go into the the key wells. So uh, if it's not working, uh, I hope that someone in the organizing committee will uh, will uh, tell me. So let's start if everyone is ready. I hope so. We can start with the first key well for 2022 um, UK Norway cross border prospect called the Edinburgh prospect. It's an, um, one of the largest undrilled structures in North Sea. It's located here in the southern part of the North Sea in the central Graben, um, close to the Flindre field and uh, Josvin High, um, a gas condensate area operated by, by Harbor Energy. It's a shell is the operator of the prospect on the Norwegian side and uh, 
and um, do you know uh, among uh, elders are partners in the prospect the well is going to be drilled as i said on on the uk side and um and but you see that the prospect is stretching over to norway it's around the 4500 meters stepped so it's a high pressure high temperature prospect and they're going to drill through the flinder field which is an oil discovery or oil field the trap itself is a three-way closure and it's a, a, a salt wall ceiling of the northwestern part and um, it's uh, you see on the on the right there you can see the different uh, reservoirs it's going to to go through uh, and you can see the seismic here as well corresponding to the geological section so the well as you said is, is located here and you see the border is, is around here next slide so this is the salt wall and the different reservoirs are located uh, approximately 4500 but uh, more um, precise 4700 meters they're testing different uh, reservoirs first uh, jurassic freshly and full formations and then triassic skagrak formation in the dran member known on the uk side it's a very very analog to the j area as i said the Jocelyn ridge so up here in the northwestern corner you have a um, gas condensate field but you also made oil discoveries in in the similar reservoirs and you can see from the j area as i said Josephine ridge you can see that they have gas concept in in the upper jurassic middle jurassic and and triassic and they have quite significant depth so i think that you probably don't see it there but it's 5300 meters something oil water or gas um gas concept water contact so it is a, a working reservoir even though it's, it's quite deep and a significant column heights and, and of course, it's the reservoir has been proved to, to exist in this area. And source migration, I don't go much into it. You see it's a quite prolific area with both oil and gas condensate and a mature uh, Cambridge clay. So most likely it's uh, gas condensate at these depths, like the Josephine uh, area. For the seal and retention, the top seal it's uh, thought to be Cambridge clay and uh, the header shales, and you have the Jonathan Mudson could act as an intra Triassic seal. So uh, you will have the salt wall act as a lateral seal. So you have this three way closure, and it's proven to uh, be working as a, as a ceiling. The salt wall, uh, for example, in the Isabella discovery, I think it's uh, up here somewhere, drilled by Total in 2020. That's uh, so it's a uh, it's a proven concept in this area. So to sum up the Edinburgh Prospect, the reservoir, Jurassic and Triassic trap, structural three-way closure, salt sealing, seal and retention, Cambridge clay and header shales, and the uh, salt, and the other source migration, and mature Cambridge clay, excellent source rock in the area. So if everyone can go on your phone and start uh, your uh, risk evaluation of the prospects. So I'm hiding the results, but um, you will see it uh, when you're finished with the risking. So you don't get too biased by, by your colleagues now. Yes, so uh, ten, uh, uh, zero is, um, is uh, most uh, risky, and you don't believe it to be there at all. So 10 is 100% uh, for sure that you have, for example, a reservoir. So it's uh, based on the NPD risking scheme we, when we uh, are, uh, for example, writing the APA. Okay, 107, 109. That's good. Okay, 117. 20. I think we need to stop now if we're going to reach all the, the wells under 20. So I will show the results. So you can see the, how we are voted now and the spread. So I will just uh, quickly.
calculate the chance of success. So the community now, uh, you can see that you are um, maybe had a quite significant spread on on both the reservoir and trap. Um, we'll share this later with you, so you can have a closer look. But the chance of success calculated by by the community now was 23% chance of success for Edinburgh prospect. And the X operator, because it's uh, this was taken from a relinquished report on UK by Mashk. Uh, the operator now, as I said, is Shell. But uh, the X operator, they have uh, the Mashk had and the chance of success of 36%. So uh, I can just show this one. For, um, you had 23%. Let's go to the next one. That's the Cambosola um, Prospect uh, Lower Cretaceous Play Opener. It's um, located in the northern part of the North Sea. Its um, partners are Longboat, Equinor, Peturu, and Spirit. It's a Cretaceous fan system fed from nearby structural highs, Gulfax, Kitbjörn, and Visun. It's a prolific Tampton area, stratigraphic pinch out with some potential structural trapping elements. So, uh, stratigraphic uh, pinch out uh, trap, clear amplitude anomaly with possible gas chimneys visible on the seismic. You can see a uh, trap uh, mapped here. Uh, all regional wells drilled beyond prospect extent, so it means that it's a um, play opener, quite important uh, play opener, finding lower Cretaceous sands in this area. You can see the volumes here, gross mean of 159 million barrels oil equivalents. Um, so just one slide on this one, uh, and uh, then you can please start. I can go back again so you see see um, see what is the summary here, but but we only have one slide, so um, it's um, a more uh, a little bit less information than you had on the Edinburgh. But again, pinch out trap, clear amplitude anomaly, possible gas chimneys. And uh, as a play opener, don't uh, have uh, penetrated these sands in the area, but it's in a prolific, uh, prolific area. So, swotes. And remember to scroll down if you don't see, see, um, see how to vote. I think I will stop when we reach 120. That was around the number we had, had in the last uh, prospects. 116, it seems that didn't stop now, so 117. So I will start now to share. 118. So you see now the, how you risk the Camposola prospect. Um, again, the reservoir is uh, quite uh, divided here. and. Uh, with uh, 51 percent and 53 on uh, on trap, uh, 69 on on source migration and 65 on seal and retention, and um, so uh, it means that uh, you have uh, the source migration as the um, uh, least risky uh, about this prospect, and then the rest worries. This, of course, as it's an unproven play in this area. So um, we have then a chance of success of 12.1%. Uh, so um, you can see now we had 12% and the operator has 50. So actually quite quite close. Let's uh, move to the next one. 
that's the Osvig East Prospect, the down flank of the Osberg, uh, Osberg field. The well is operated by OMV and it's um, located in the North Viking Graben. And you, as I said, you see it's close to the Oseberg uh, field and, and the Tune field and uh, east of the Marken Linge. And um, it's the partners are Source Energy and Winter Chaldea. It's um, not too much uh, information. It's uh, going to be drilled in, in uh, Q2 2022. And uh, it's a uh, reservoir is the Brent Group, Tarbert and Nest Formation. Rotated uh, fault block as trap. The depth is uh, around 4,480 meters. It's as the gas condensate as the most likely fluid. And uh, the volumes are in place. It's uh, 136 million barrels oil equivalents. Prospectivity identified in the rotated Jurassic fault blocks immediately downflank from Tune and Oseberg fields. Uzbek East will drill the Tarbet and Nest Reservoir in Eastern Fault Block, high volumes, closest to the Tuna field. Um, and um, you can see the geological section uh, crossing the Uzbek uh, prospects, Uz East, Mid, and West here. So it rotated Fault Blocks, as I said, with uh, the gas condensate in, in the Brent group. So if you please start risking. Again, it's um, the Brent Group as the reservoir and uh, and um, and rotated fault blocks at 4,480 meters depth. So a uh, question in the team so about the reservoir effectiveness is on the reservoir. So um, as I said, it's uh, up to you where you, you put this just to, it's, I think it's interesting to see uh, maybe how different people can be. So um, in uh, how you you think about this, but uh, look at it as when you're filling in, in the, for example, in APA, if you are in writing APA um, applications to, to MPD. So it's uh, it's uh, I think it's good if we have some misunderstandings as well because then it shows that uh, we look at things differently and then that's maybe why different companies risks uh, prospect uh, differently as well. So closing to 120 now, people have voted. So um, I'll soon share the result with you. Hundred fifteen. Okay, seems like it's stopped. So we see here again reservoir is uh, is uh, most spread uh, with the highest risk or um, uh, the, the key failure uh, potential, and um, then uh, trap it seems to be be uh, more certain here. Uh, I think actually that's uh, different from what the operator has said, so um, that's interesting. So we end up then with a chance of success about 27%, and operator has 36%. So it's it's uh, relatively not that far compared to Campbell Sola. We had uh, had 12%, uh, um, and now we are 27. But uh, again, the operator is also more optimistic in, in uh, the Osvik than it was the operator is for the Cambosola. So 27% uh, on the Osvik East from, from us. So let's go into the last key well to, to risk uh, together. And it's a 
called the Gini Prospect, and it's uh, Upper Jurassic analog to the Fenya field. So um, I'm aware that this is probably not for all of you. It's a key uh, well, but uh, as I said, it's it's not very easy to get uh, published the data or or data that shows um, information enough to 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 share with you, but. Uh, uh, I think for both, you see the companies here, it's the Longboat, Okea, uh, Harbor, and Equinor, and three of those companies are are uh, are, are quite uh, quite new on the shelf, uh, especially Longboat and, uh, and also Harbor, uh, or known as uh, Chrysler Norge earlier in, in, uh, in Norway. They, um, they, of course, have established now on, on the shelf and, uh, and been active in, in exploration drilling, um, but as far as I know, they don't have any producing access, so of course it's important for them to, to find uh, hydrocarbons. And uh, Okea is the operator of Dragon, so of course the strategy there is to find resources close to their infrastructure. So the Gini Prospect is the Upper Jurassic uh, on trend on the on the Fenya field, analog to the Fenya, around 2,000 meters depth of the reservoir. It has um, the Galtwort gas discovery within the license. Uh, you see it uh, in left uh, structure of the, of the figure here. Is it within a prolific petroleum system on migration route to Dragon Field and it's a potential oil tie back to the Nord redevelopment gas to air infrastructure. The well, well was actually spudded on the New Year's Eve, so um, we will have the results quite soon. Uh, you see the Gini Prospect of Jurassic um, system here between the Hosselmus and the Galtwort. It's a uh, gross uh, resources about 41 million barrels oil equivalents. And um, you can see a sketch here. Uh, so that they have actually two different or uh, several different targets that could be uh, tested and uh, have oil. So it's a uh, it's genie in the in the top that I want you to risk and don't think don't risk the Harmine. Uh, underlying prospect, so just uh, risk the uh, uppermost prospect, the genie. So I hope you're ready, and that was uh, very quick and short, but we soon have a new presentation, so please try to risk uh, the genie prospect that is currently being drilled now, and uh, it will maybe be at press release uh, quite soon, so uh, that's uh, that we will, have the, we will have the right answer there quite soon. Okay, almost 100 people have voted. Well, let's get up to 115, 120. Hundred five. So I think Longboat has been quite successful in the wells they have attended. I think it's three discovers or something. So uh, it looks uh, looks uh, perhaps promising for this this prospect as well. Okay, 111. Let's see if we can get uh, four more people to vote. Okay, seems like it stopped on 111. So let's look at the results. So reservoir 65%, trap uh, 58%, and the source migration 79%, and seal and retention 61%. So then you have the trap as the most risky part, and then um, source and migration seems uh, to be more or less. Uh, uh, proven in this era, situated between uh, uh, two discoveries, and that gives uh, you a chance of success of 18 percent. So um, I can uh, just uh, that was the last well, and I have la one last question with you, but I just want to share the the risking you had done. 
so you see your uh, your risking here together. 23 for Edinburgh compared to 36 from the um, uh, Mashk, as was the previous operator. 12% for Cambosola compared to 15 and 27% compared to 36. And then for the Gini prospect, 18% compared to 27. So, so perhaps um, we are in all cases uh, more pessimistic than uh, the operator, especially for the Gini uh, prospect. So um, the last question I want to ask you, and thank you very much. So, oh, sorry, I didn't mention 27%, as you saw now in the Excel spreadsheet was uh, the chance success for, for Gini. Uh, and the last question is just which exploration well are you looking forward to? So uh, it doesn't need to be these uh, exploration wells that just present here. It could be uh, other exploration wells that wasn't included. So uh, and write if it's possible. Proppen, Uusvig. Coming a lot of new wells that we didn't present it now, so that's uh, interesting. Seems like Edinburgh is um, in the center of attention. It seems like it's uh, a lot of wells uh, we missed that uh, are um, are interesting to follow. So um, I guess we will uh, read more about those in the, in the press release, but uh, we'll uh, definitely follow the other wells as well. Yes, I think uh, we are now four minutes uh, over time and we have a keynote presentation by Alexi Milko and um, he's going to be introduced by Eirik, but I can say that uh, Alexi have worked on um, on pre-drill versus post-drill outcomes. So exactly more or less maybe that what we had done now looking at uh, pre-drill uh, and we will soon have have the post-drill. So uh, Thank you very much, uh, everyone, for for sharing. Um, it's been uh, quite interesting, and um, looking forward to see the the well results. So, uh, back to you, Eric.